Hello everyone, welcome to this data analytics tutorial. Today we're going to be going over substrings and how to perform substring queries in pandas. So what is a substring? A substring is a string within a string. So for example, we have this string here. Hello, my name is Alex. And within that string, you're going to find all of the following. So we have hello, we have LO comma, we have E is A, and then X exclamation point at the end. So if we put in something like low, it's going to tell us that yes, it is in fact with a substring of this longer string. This however is just um, on a single string basis. We want to be able to do this on a large scale to filter our data frames. So we want to filter our data frames based on these, these substrings or elements within the string and not necessarily just the entire string itself. And we'll see why in just a second. So if you're familiar with SQL at all, this is very similar to like or I like, um, which is very common, very easy to use in SQL. In pandas, however, it can be a little more complicated and not a whole lot of people know about this. And it's a very useful skill. So analyzing substrings can give us a lot of information about these strings that again, won't necessarily be obvious if you're just filtering based on the entire string. So we're going to import our packages and then bring in this data frame that I just created. So this is a data frame of hypothetical uh, products from the NBA's website that you can purchase. So we have um, product name, the price of the product, the sales units, and the revenue. So you'll see within these product names, there's a lot of information about the products. So just in this one alone, we know that it comes from the Lakers and the type of product is a baseball cap. Other examples here, we have a shirt, it's long sleeve, Clippers jersey. Um, so all sorts of information can be found within these strings and that's what we're going to do. So how do we filter based on substrings? It's with this function right here pandas.series.string.contains. So what is the actual output of this function? Let's take a look. So we have a data frame, which is called products. The column is name, so that's a series. And then dot string dot contains. And let's say we want to look for Lakers. So this output is going to give us a series of Booleans, which is very convenient. which will make it very easy to then put into our data frame to filter. One issue we run into, however, is we have this null value down at the bottom. So let's say, for example, this is, we're bringing in a brand new product, um, but the website hasn't updated yet. So we have just have a null value in place of the product name. So this becomes an issue when you go to take this series to filter your data frame. So if we do this, then we're gonna get an error. And the reason is because of that null value at the bottom. So what we have to do then is we have to pass in this NA argument, which is basically saying what to do with null values. So we wanna say that if we find any null values, we're gonna set those to false. And then there we go, we have our filtered data frame. Now notice here that currently this is case sensitive, meaning that only this exact string will be uh, filtered in here. But we have other products like this one here, it's all caps, um, and this one here, which is title formatting, that are not gonna make it into this filter. So let's say we want to be case insensitive. So there is a case argument. Let me set that equal to false. The default argument is true. We're gonna set it equal to false, and there we go. So we have all of our Lakers products here. So now we can use that to say, let's find the total revenue for this, for all these Lakers products. So let's say dot loc. And call this revenue and dot sum. And there you go. $182,620 on Lakers gear. Now, let's say we actually want to be able to pass multiple um, uh, substrings into our filter. How are we going to go about that? So the way we can do this is with what's known as regular expressions. So regular expressions 
are a way of um, inputting a substring that is not literal. So for example, when we type Lakers in here, we are literally searching for this, um, this string compared to, let's say we wanna look for hat or cap, and you'll see how this is different. So same thing up to this point, but we'll put in for our substring cap, and then this pipe right here, and hat. So we'll specify NA is false to get rid of our null value and set this to case insensitive. So if we just search for this literal string, nothing, we're not gonna get anything because we don't have this found anywhere in our uh, products list. But because of something called regular expressions, this pipe here actually has meaning within the substring. And in this case, this means or. So what we're telling us to do is to search for the substring cap or hat within our series. So the output is again gonna be a series of Booleans, which we can then use to filter our data frame like so. And so we get all of our headwear in this case here. So the reason that we're able to do this with our, our regular expressions is because of another argument in here, reg x, and the default is set to true. So meaning we can use regular expressions. So set that to true, the output's the same. Now let's say we set this to false. If we set this to false, we're essentially turning off regular expressions. So now pandas is going to search for this literal string here. The pipe loses its meaning. So it's gonna to have to search for this exact string. And now we get nothing because this exact string is not found. So this is just one, uh, just quick example of a regular expression that's very easy to use and simple and practical. Now, there, I could make an entire and much longer and more complicated video on other regular expressions, but this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg and something that's easy and everyone should learn how to use. Now, let's say, for example, you want to uh, pass in more items to this filter. So let's say you want to add in, um, say headwear, yeah, headwear or Clippers gear down here. We can just add another pipe, say Clippers. And there we go. So we have caps, hats, and our Clippers jersey and t-shirts. So we can keep going. So we can, you know, we can put another pipe and another string, pipe, string. This can go as long as you want. But this can get a little bit tedious by, you know, hard coding all this in. So let's say we actually want to pass all this through a list rather than again, hard coding in um, all this information. So the way we can do this is our same arguments. Again, we need uh, regular expressions equal to true, which is the default value for this to work. And what we're gonna do for our input substring here is we're gonna type just our pipe and then dot join and then our filter list. So this is what we want to test for. We wanna look for hat, cap, and clipper. Clippers could be an S, we don't really necessarily need it, but that's gonna be, these are gonna be our three elements that we're looking for. So we'll put our filter list and we'll put it into this dot join argument. So essentially what this is gonna do is if we copy that and run this, is this is manually putting together that regular expression substring that we had up here. So, but it's just doing it in a way where we can actually use a list. So let's comment that out, bring this back in. And there we go. There's our output with caps, hats, and uh, clippers here. So now let's say we want to filter based on the start or the end of a substring. We can do that with, um, fortunately we have the starts with and ends with functions. Now we can also do this with regular expressions, but again, that gets a lot more complicated and that is a topic for another video. But if you wanna learn the basics, these are very, very good and easy functions to use. So let's say we want to look for products that start with NBA. So we can go use our data frame products name dot string dot starts with, this is the name of the function, and then 
NBA. Now, notice we're not going to get anything. Here. This is all going to be false, except for our null value. Let's change that again to NA equals false. So nothing's going to happen here. So if we put this into a filter, then obviously we're not going to get anything because uh, all our booleans are false. But the way we can do this is to fix our case insensitivity problem. So NBA, and there we go. The issue with these two functions is that they don't actually have a case argument, um, and they don't have also something called flags, which is another way that you can adjust for uh, case sensitivity. So the way we can actually do this is um, we're going to use the dot lower function. And this is kind of a manual way to actually do this. So we can do put in our series dot string dot lower. This is going to show us all of our products in lowercase. So really what we're telling it is we're going to take this and we're just going to replace our initial series that we put in with that. So now we know that everything is lowercase. So we can adjust our input to that. And there we go, we have solved the problem. So that's just a quick kind of manual workaround for these functions that don't have um, a way to adjust for case sensitivity. So um, now let's look at ends with. So let's look at products that end with the string shirt. So we have products name dot str dot ends with. And shirt, so NA equals false. And put it to the filter. So again, we're going to deal with that, again, kind of case sensitivity problem. So let's put dot str dot lower. And there we go. So we, those are all of our uh, products that end with the string shirt. Now let's say again, we want to test for multiple substrings. So how are we gonna do this with starts with and ends with? So it's so the same thing here, except the way we can do this is we can pass through a tuple. So not a list, if you pass through a list, it's, you're gonna get an error. We can't use dot join here either. So we have to, we have a tuple and Say shirt, cap, or hat, close the tuple, and there we go. So we have cap, shirt, 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 hat, cap, and hat. Okay, so let's say we also want to do some other data analysis. Let's say we want to look for um, substrings that occur multiple times within the overall strings. So the way we can do this is with dot string dot count. Um, so let's say, for example, we have products, just so we can see the output of the function. So products name dot string dot count. And let's say our substring is, so we have shirt. So what this is going to do is it's going to give you a series of um, how many times each one of those occurs. And so if you come up to our data frame here, we'll see that um, we have one instance at least where shirt comes up multiple times. Um, but again, this is only gonna register as one because of the case uh, sensitivity there with the capital S. So let's come back down here. And although we don't have um, a case argument here, what we can do is use uh, the flags argument. And this is where, we imported this uh, RE package at the top, and this is where this is gonna come in handy. So what we can do is we can say flags equals RE dot, and then all caps, ignore case. Now you'll see right here, index four, shirt comes up twice. And so this is our output. Again, a series showing the number of times that that substring occurs within the string. 
So let's say we want to look for product names where shirt comes up two plus times. So we're gonna take this same output here. So we can put it into a filter. Say that is greater than or equal to two. And there we go, there is our product. Now let's say we want to look, look at the length in terms of number of characters of each string. We can use the pandas.string.len function, which just for clarification has no um, arguments within it. So um, I'll show the output, products, name, dot string dot len. And there we go. So this is the number of characters in each one of our strings. So let's say we want to flag for our department or our team or whoever is looking at this data. So let's look at some product names that we think are a little bit too long. So we can use this in another filter. And let's say greater than or equal to, let's say 30 characters. Um, so it's like 35. So we have this one string that we think too many characters and we can identify this to our team as a product name that we should probably change on the website. And finally, let's look at replacing substrings. So let's say for example, looking at our um, original data frame, we're getting a little frustrated with the um, case sensitivity problems with Lakers. You'll see it comes up here in all caps, here in title um, format. Um, and then here we have it in all lowercase. So let's say we want to just standardize that substring to make our queries a whole lot easier. So we can use products name dot string dot replace. And this is going to take a couple of inputs. So first, what we want to look for. So let's say Lakers, and I want it in title format. So I'll say Lakers, and this is what we're going to get. So notice in that one, have that one product right here that was in all lowercase and in index three it is now uppercase. Um, again, a problem here is though, is we have case sensitivity and we want to fix that. So we want to change all instances of Lakers to this title format. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the case input. So we'll say case equals false to turn, um, switch it to case insensitive. And now here's our output. So you'll see everything is in title format here, here, and here. So notice that this case equals false only affects your input here. So it's not going to affect what you're replacing your input with. It's just going to um, just it, just looking for the string here is the only thing that case insensitivity is going to change. Um, so now let's say we actually want to make that change in the data frame. So we can copy our line of code here and say products name equals that, and let's just confirm. This went through, and there we go. There's our output. So that's the end of the tutorial today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and you learned something valuable today, and consider subscribing to see more data analytics content in the future. Thank you.